Okay, um, I think we can begin now. Um, so thank you again, um, everyone, for joining this uh, Job Streets webinar today. So um, today, uh, as you know, COVID-19 situation has forced us to adapt to the new normal. And this means that hiring processes and procedures will be different. So today we're going to talk about what candidates need to do in this new normal. Uh, as you know, we have Chua, who is our uh, speaker for today, and he is actually our customer solutions consultant here at Job Street. He has spent um, time with hundreds of companies to understand and work on their recruitment needs and conducted numerous hiring solution workshops for HR professionals and hiring managers as well. Before we begin, uh, I'd like to inform you that if you have any questions, you can type it out in our Q&A section or the chat uh, section, or even raise your hands and we can get to your questions as soon as we are able to. Um, today's session is actually in collaboration with InvestKL. And today we have Riyad Dalan, uh, who is the Director, Investor and Ecosystem Management here um, to give us a, a few words. So I would like to invite him to say a few words before we start. And thank you, Calvin. Hi, good morning, everyone. How are you all today? I hope all of you are back home with your loved ones and uh, that you are all healthy and safe. Uh, Salam al to those who are fasting. We are now down to the last 10 days. Well, time really flies, yeah? Uh, on behalf of InvestKL, I would like to welcome you to this joint collaboration uh, webinar with Job Street. This is part of the InvestKL's talent program where we help to connect universities uh, with multinational companies. Let me just give you a, a brief introduction about InvestKL for those who have not heard of us. InvestKL is an agency under the Ministry of International Trade and Industry. Uh, we were established for the sole purpose of attracting large multinational companies to set up their regional hubs here in Kuala Lumpur as well as Greater Kuala Lumpur. Our aim by bringing these multinational companies uh, is to create regional, high-skilled, high-paying jobs for Malaysians. By having these multinational hubs in KL, Malaysians need not expatriate themselves abroad in order to hold regional positions. This, in a way, will stem the brain drain that has been a problem in Malaysia for many years. So after nine years of its establishment, InvestKL today has managed to bring in 95 of these large Fortune 500 companies across various sectors like oil and gas, engineering, construction, e-commerce, IT and etc. We have also created close to 14,000 high skilled, high paying regional jobs. I know many of you all today are a bit concerned about scarcity of jobs available for you to graduate later. Today, in the news, uh, a search of close to half a million unemployment uh, has been recorded, and these numbers are increasing. We and the rest of the government machineries are putting our best effort come up with a plan to reverse this problem. By end of May, the government should be coming up with an economic recovery plan. And jobs for Malaysia will be the main priority. So, but as students, you don't have to worry much about this. What you need to do is to come up with your best results as you can possibly achieve and prepare yourselves for the job world outside. Leave it to us and the rest of the government. We will do our utmost great jobs for you. So lastly, on behalf of InvestKL, I'd like to thank uh, Kelvin, uh, Chua Kong Yu uh, from Job Street uh, for the presentation that we'll be giving later. I hope all of you all will benefit from the talk you'll we'll be giving. And um, do also follow InvestKL's social media as we'll be broadcasting our future upcoming webinar and talks. Lastly, I wish you all the very success. Stay home, stay safe, and take care of yourself. Back to you, Kelvin. Thank you. Thank you, Riyadh, for that um, for the talk. Um, so, without further ado, let's begin today's session. Um, Chua, let's um, let's begin this. All right. Thank you very much. So, um, cool. If you can see uh, on your screen over here uh, today, uh, main topic we're going to talk about, you know, researching for the industry and specialization in demand. I guess that's very important because then you will know. Uh, who is hiring, that's most important, and also what type of specialization uh, is key right now, all right? The second thing we're gonna talk about is also assess and evaluate the current skills, and also the preparation for uh, job application on how you're gonna apply uh, for new jobs as well. Now, um, with me here, uh, Kelvin uh, is my co-host. 
So he will be taking in uh, all the uh, questions. So if there's this chat function, if you just join and the uh, chat function, you can actually type in your question. Kelvin will be monitoring all of those, right? I want this to be more interactive. That would mean that as the topics that I've touched on, you can continue to ask that questions and then we will uh, move on to the next so that you don't remember 10 minutes ago what I've, I've shared, right? So um, Kelvin will be monitoring that, right? So cool. Now I just wanna start by saying that, you know, the COVID-19 crisis has created a chain of events that has impacted globally on health, economic, business, and even the education. As for the economy and business are affected, employment and opportunities are, and expectations are also shifting. All right? If you are one of those uh, students or, or just graduate, and or you're looking for new jobs right now, so you can see that um, you might want to keep in mind certain new strategies being used from, from the application applying for jobs to uh, the actual job itself. Now, this is very important as companies today are adjusting their businesses to continue to operate by, by implementing new normals of day-to-day uh, -day work in the midst of the COVID-19 crisis. As a job seeker, you also need to adjust and reassess some of your preparation before uh, you apply for a job, there, which uh, something that most people need to uh, be doing in the old uh, normal ways, right? Now, however, the big difference uh, this time may come in the form of where and how things are done. Here are some of the things that I'm gonna share about, right? So the first one, let's talk about uh, researching for industries and uh, specialization. <clears throat> now, part of the reality of COVID-19 crisis creates uh, is the shift in the list of businesses that can be considered as uh, essential or in demand during this uh, time and even during the aftermath. So it's important to know which industry are top of the most of after because that's where the job opportunities are likely to be found. Now, businesses that are not earning that much during this time may decide not to hire in a while, while uh, they might also need to reallocate their budget or other important things uh, so that they can operate normally. Now, knowing the industry with higher job opportunities can help uh, determine the skills and specialization and even the experience needed for the job. Now, keep in mind that there are still qualifications required uh, when the hiring process takes place and more efficient for both applicants and uh, employers, right? So as you can see uh, over here in my um, slide, these are some of the normal uh, specialization that um, you can actually go into job street and find. Now on this quadrant here, industries today, we can see IT is currently one of the, the hiring right now. So you can see the industries like software engineers, uh, programmers, developers, they are hiring. Uh, now with CMCO, the conditional MCO taking place, uh, they also allow uh, manufacturing uh, companies to also start. So that is where uh, they are also hiring um, and factory workers, uh, even in office as well, right? Now banking industry has uh, always been continuing. Uh, yes, so you can see that some of the, in the banking industry, in the HQ and also branch level, uh, it really depends. They are also hiring in, in that sense, yeah. Now, uh, in terms of specialization, so industry means the different type of industry within the marketplace, in Malaysia's marketplace. The specialization means, you know, the type of job that you're gonna do. So example like programmer, uh, many industries will hire programmers, right? Like from the IT industry, banking industry, they will hire programmers, yeah? So in terms of specialization, then we can see things like programmers and IT analysts uh, in high demand. So for the past four weeks, I've been in constant uh, communication with many IT companies as well. And they are also asking me, how do I uh, help them in hiring programmers, yeah? Now, why IT analysts also comes in today is because today is a new normal. Or COVID-19 causes the new normal in Malaysia. So that is where even the small, medium uh, enterprises or businesses 
they also require uh, people to analyze their business or their IT trends. So that's where they see that it's a, a trend moving towards uh, analysts as well. Yeah. Now the second specialization that I see that is picking up is definitely sales and marketing. Uh, this is where a lot of people will be hiring sales uh, and they want or they also shift, right? Uh, few sales people, uh, corporate sales people to do more tele sales or online sales, right? Uh, this is why today we need to also expand our skills uh, and I'll talk about that later on uh, in how do we adapt to the new normal. The second thing is also marketing and you notice today that it's also a trend. Uh, well, 20 years ago when I started working, uh, there is the four Ps and today there is seven Ps and that's where you learn about the different sorts of marketing, right? But today, um, we see that online marketing, digital marketing, uh, e-commerce are also coming up. And that's where today we also will, uh, companies will require how do, you, uh, how do you market certain products and services also. So if you are in that um, specialization, that will also help, right? Last, lastly, um, uh, finance and accounting uh, has always been in demand, uh, mainly because any organization will really need to do their bookkeeping and, and hiring, right? So, so that's why bookkeeping and uh, accountants are still uh, required in any organization, right? So if uh, these are some of the specialization that we can see that you will be needed. And of course, um, maybe programmer, uh, sales or even finance, this role is actually brought across all industries. So regardless which industry that you move to, then you, if you are also within one of these, you can also still function, right? Cool. So before I move to the next topic, um, as I want to keep this more interactive, do you have any questions uh, from your side? Perhaps, uh, Kelvin, can you read out some of the questions? Um, yeah, Chua, we have one um, from uh, Fareha. Uh, she's asking, um, what will the job market for foreign students be like uh, if they want to pursue a career here in Malaysia? Okay, um, for foreign students, so here this is a, a bit tricky, mainly because then uh, you will need a work permit. Uh, and also you need the company to sponsor you so that you can get the work permit. Uh, that is where also you uh, will need to stand out so that the company will want to hire you, right? Um, there, are, there are a few cases where uh, if you go through, some of you go through internship and after internship, then you can also convert into a permanent role. That really depends right now. But one of the challenges right now is definitely we see the job market here shrinking, but nevertheless, they are still uh, hiring. Yeah. Cool. Next question, Kelvin. Um, how about job opportunity in uh, academic fields? All right. Uh, in, academic, in academic fields, um, Right now, we are seeing a different trend uh, whereby uh, lecturers right now are going into uh, online. <laughs> so definitely uh, lecturers will also be teaching things uh, via Zoom and stuff like that as well. Yeah. So in terms of hiring, uh, not much, not many. Cool. Uh, is there any more? On, on, on this topic on yeah we, we have uh, two more um, so uh, Cairo is asking is it appropriate for the time being to send resume to company or hiring managers right now yes definitely so um, one of the ways that you can continue to expand yourself and that is in my third topic we will talk a bit about how do you uh, send out resume but definitely uh, keep your resumes updated and then we will uh, the, can, the hirers can actually continue to see that, right? So good, I can see that we are, we, there are some questions related to that. Uh, we, I'll take the last question and I'll move on to the second uh, topic here, right? Cool. Okay, so um, one more question here is, uh, what are the opportunities in construction industry um, 
during this MCO? All right, uh, there, there is some good news. Uh, so for construction industry, uh, there is a mix of news coming in from the state government and the federal government in terms of starting work. Um, but needless to say, some uh, the government allows to, to work. So that would mean that uh, you can also start, uh, well, the labor forces will be at the construction site. Uh, that would mean architect will still need to be there. Uh, land surveyors will also be there. Um, interior designers are already out uh, working. So uh, in, in terms of HQ sign, yes, they are also moving, but they are also restricted. Um, in that sense, in construction, they would need to consolidate their workforce. Uh, reason being is because um, while there is a need for employment, but they are also trying to convert some of their current uh, em employees to do or to multitask, to do different uh, roles, right? Uh, yeah, so I can see that uh, last, a few more questions. Uh, I'll, I'll pick on that in a while because it's related to my second topic. Uh, Kelvin will just take note of that question, right? Now, the next topic uh, I want to talk a bit uh, about is also um, here, assessing and evaluating your current skills, right? Uh, and the first thing you need to do is kind of list out your skills required for your role. Uh, so example, things like sales or uh, will require communication skills and presentation skills. Uh, example of even in your, if you are in finance, that would require analytical skills, right? Now, why the reason why I put Excel uh, inside here is because uh, I actually, well, while reading resumes, I do not, uh, I do not expect candidates to put in Microsoft Office or Words and stuff like that. But for finance roles, right, uh, I really, I really want to see people having Excel skills because they will do a lot of macro and pivot tables and stuff like that. And that I find is really a skill set required. Uh, and today, even though I am in the consultation um, uh, team, that is where I also require such uh, skills to actually do my graph and data uh, while I churn out all the, the information, right? Now, during this MCO period, uh, I think we are already moving to our six, fifth to sixth week already. Um, it's a good time to, to evaluate what skills have you learned for the past six weeks? Have you uh, taken up uh, something new? So that's a good uh, evaluation whether you see, you know, are you just sitting down here and waiting for MCO to be over? Or you can proactively take up, uh, take up uh, new skills. One of the common things um, that I see is that soft skill is becoming a very big trend. Uh, soft skill being to say communication skill across all specialization and industry. That would require you to talk well that will require you to portray the right um, uh, intonation when you talk. So one of the challenges I see also in, um, in when you're talking about skills is we're gonna have a lot more webinars, we're gonna have a lot more teleconferencing, we're gonna have a lot more videos uh, up in place as well. So that is why uh, your pronunciation, your facial communication is very, very important. Uh, in terms of soft skills, uh, well, Commun uh, common sense is also very, very important today. Uh, meaning to say, in terms of etiquette, in terms of culture, sensitivity to culture is also key. So this is where, you know, um, in terms of etiquette, saying please, thank you, uh, that is also very, very important. Uh, and today, uh, one, of the, uh, one of the, well, previously in the past challenge, right, trying to get uh, multinationals or even any companies to go online is one of the toughest uh, things because they have to invest in technology. But because of COVID-19, almost 90% of the companies have to go online. And as consumer ourselves as well, we start to use uh, things like uh, online to, grab, uh, to get food, uh, to order food and stuff like that. So we can see online is becoming more of a required skill so that you know you can um, uh, communicate with different people we also find that because now we are doing this online 
you you are no longer geographically bound. That would mean your conversation can take place across different countries to, to someone in, in, including in France, right? But uh, we have uh, online for teleconference with people in America, Australia, Hong Kong, Southeast Asia. So please bear that in mind. One of my, cha one of my challenges is also um, once we start working uh, from home and it's online, the problem is, you know, I have back-to-back -back meetings with different parties. So sometimes if you can see like today's presentation, 10 to 11, 11 to 12, and then there's another one, 12 to one. So my time for lunch is also out, right? Yeah. Now the next thing also to share with you is, it's also a great time right now to pick up a new language, uh, mainly because today, I mean, Malaysia is less. They are to be multiracial and also, also is multilingual. That would mean that almost every one of us as Malaysians here, uh, we can speak dual language, either Bahasa and English, uh, English and Chinese, uh, Bahasa or, uh, and Tamil, yeah, English and Tamil. Yeah. So we have a mix uh, of many different languages. Now, some of the languages that is still key, especially in call centers, uh, example from Korean, uh, Japanese, right? So these are things that are still constantly in top in demand when you want to hire to go into call centers. Uh, that's where customer service, help desk, uh, still play an important role as well. Yeah. Now I, I picked this up from the internet and this is where I, can, uh, I find that this is very useful. These are things that we are aware and we understand these are the knowns and also the unknowns and knowns and unknown. I'm sure you can, uh, you heard of this somewhere. So this is something that is already subconscious in your, in your mind that you already know and understand of some things, right? But it's also to, good to know of things that you don't know. And that is where you can learn, right? Now, uh, things we understand but not uh, aware of. So, that, so these are things that you know you you might want to go and find out, and that's where you speak to more people, network with uh, some of them, and that's where you can see aha. So you talk about certain topic, and I'm not aware of certain things, and that is where you you know they are known, and you can learn, right? Of course, there are many things that we are unknown of the unknowns. Uh, we are neither aware nor understand of it. So this is where you know, um, if you read more and stuff like that, you will continue to edify yourself in terms of knowledge. Now, why this is very important is related to my third topic on talking about you know preparation for your yeah, jobs uh, because this is where you stand out against other candidates yeah uh, because today conversation between um, you and the interviewer and companies they will also want to know how um, not just how well academic are you but also um, how in uh, how high is your EQ and IQ as well, right? Both of that is also important. Cool. Now, uh, I see uh, more questions coming in. I will pass back to Kelvin. Sure. Um, I saw a few questions on um, related to engineering. So um, I think particularly in oil and gas field. So what is the trend like in, in that field, oil and gas? Um, we have another one about chemical engineering as well. So. Um, I guess pretty similar industries. Correct. So let me address uh, chemical engineering. Now, chemical engineering um, is kind of like a niche market, meaning to say that you would probably have 50 to 60 job uh, opportunities, but there would probably be about 5,000 of you applying for the job, right? So that is going to be a challenge. Uh, so that would mean that you would really need to fight to go be on top. Uh, so in that sense, you would really need to also pick up other skills. That would also mean that you would want to look into uh, how, how you, what you've learned can also edify other related skills. So that, that, that doesn't mean the end of the world because, you know, yeah, you can also expand to different uh, not just industry specific, but you can also 
explore different industries that would hire a chemical engineer. Now, um, you would need to have a broader um, mindset because don't skew yourself just to, to the oil and gas industry, but maybe you want to expand into other things. Now, some of the, the other industries like the, the food technologies also require some of your skill sets as well. Yeah, cool. So Pavitra here has two questions. Um, so she's an actual science student and would like to know what other programming skills would be useful uh, other than Excel. Um, second question is, does the candidate, um, sorry, what can a candidate do to stand out if uh, he or she doesn't have excellent CGPA? Okay, so let's, the, we see that there's two questions over here. Now let's take up the first one. What other programming language or programming skills, right? Now, um, Java, JavaScript, uh, those PHP are all in place over here. So these are very popular, but um, there are also others like C++, C Sharp, they are also seen. So these are some of the things that uh, programming or, or programmers will understand. Uh, I even had two days ago, had someone, an employer calling me up to find out for Lua, L-U-A programming. It's a gaming uh, progr uh, programming language. So because of that, um, Java and, and JavaScript, C++, C Sharp, um, Visual Basic, uh, those are quite common uh, at the moment right now, right? Um, the second question is, can a candidate, what can a candidate do to stand out? That's an excellent question. Um, correct, because today, uh, well, so if you don't have an excellent CGPA, I, I want to share this with you that today, the, the employers are going to be very stringent in terms of hiring. Uh, they, are going, they are going to look for multitaskers. They, they are also looking, not only are they looking at your academic, but they also will look into your attitude. In that sense, they will also want to see, are you willing to do more? Are you willing to be proactive? Are you willing to think outside the box? Are you willing to take risks? So all this now comes into play because um, they don't just want someone from the textbook uh, basis, they, but they also want people who are very uh, risk takers. They are also people who, who are more open, right? So the attitude portion comes in uh, to edify you and you will need to know how to prepare your uh, resume or your, your job fit profile to showcase that. And I will talk about that in also in a while, right? Cool. Any, any other question? Uh, maybe we'll take one more. Um, are you recommending that fresh graduates uh, start their own business instead of uh, working for others, meaning being an entrepreneur? Uh, okay, uh, that's an excellent question. Um, <clears throat> now, uh, there is no wrong or right in terms of starting a, a business. Uh, in fact, the Malaysian government uh, encourage uh, more entrepreneurs to come out. But personally, for me, I would suggest that you know you work with an organization first, so that you know the process and procedures, uh, so that you are more familiar with. Uh, I suggest that you know if you are strong in sales, uh, in engagement with clients, uh, strong in digital marketing. Uh, that's something good that you want to also learn in, uh, real, the, in the real world so that you can actually put all this in place uh, so that once you have the knowledge and most importantly, the experience, you can actually um, go out and implement it rather than, you know, as a fresh graduate, as and you start it out yourself, it's going to be very challenging for you. Uh, one of the key challenges is I see is always communication and it's between partners, between you and your partners and usually um, that breaks out, right? Uh, so it's very important to also set expectations of who does what. If you, if you, if each expectation is very clear, then it's, it's, it's great. But today, with the economy situation right now, um, we don't know uh, how well or what is going to take uh, to boom up, right? 
So it's depend on whether you are willing to to really take that that risk uh, or not, right? And you will need to sustain for the next six months. That would mean that your uh, not your cash flow, your capital will need to sustain for six months, right? Cool. Okay, we move on to the next topic. All right. Now, uh, the last thing I want to talk about is also talking about preparation for job application. And the first thing we need to do is talking about updating your resume. And this is where uh, <clears throat> your resume is the job suite uh, profile. So if you go into the job suite uh, website, key in the candidate's profile, uh, this is eventually is your resume. Reason why is because we have close to 90,000 uh, clients uh, using JobSuite and they use the same format. So you don't have to attach your resumes in the JobSuite profile, use that because today candidates, uh, hires today are also following the same format. And uh, I've been giving a lot of career talks to many different universities. Uh, they are also following uh, this, this same format as we, as we continue to move, right? Now, um, this is where you can see you should have your resume to be more consistent uh, where you are consistently updated because today hires are always in search for good talent, right? Now, what do you need to update in your resume? Things are like your skills related. So it's also listed in the, under the skills column. Uh, and then they also allow you to, you know, uh, put in multiple what other skills, right? Like Java is a skill, uh, PHP is a skill for programming, Excel is a skill, communication is a skill, negotiation, perhaps you learned that in the university is also a skill, presentation, very important today, it's also a skill, so you can also put that in, right? Now, the reason why I'm sharing this with you is because I come from the hires perspective. Most of the time, I speak to hires and I train uh, HR and hiring managers. I train HR on how to search for candidate online using the job streets platform. That is this um, tool called uh, resume search. That would mean that HR today are searching for resumes and they are searching for fresh graduates resumes as well. So it's very important for you to key in skills inside uh, even keywords, things like what have you done. So now example of uh, IT. Why do I keep sharing a lot of IT analogies is mainly because IT has been one of the hardest to feel in, in Malaysia as well, right? So uh, things like um, head of application uh, securities, right? Okay, so that will probably in 20 years time be your job if you are head of that department. But what does a head of application securities do? So I cannot find that in, uh, in the resume unless I key in certain skill sets or even keywords. What are the keywords? Things like penetration testing, vulnerability assessment. So these are very good, right? So when I search for that, I will also find that. Now in terms of finance role, bookkeeping, or even SAP, uh, so that will also be very, very useful for you, right? The second thing after you've done your updating your resume, the next thing you will need to do is also prepare for job screening to be done online. Now, <clears throat> I understand the new, um, the old ways was you submit your, your profile via job street and after that you will receive an email or a call from the camp, from the hires and then you will either have a phone interview or even be invited to their premise. Um, but today, because of the MCO, it will face a challenge because you cannot go out, right? And today, many, many companies are taking a lot of precaution. So some of them are using Zoom to, to interview uh, you. So this is where phone interviews or online interview are uh, being done. Now, that is also where if you join some of the MNC companies, uh, they also have online assessment. This is where you will need to complete maybe a test or quiz uh, within 45 minutes or 40 minutes, right? So this is where you need to do. Um, uh, sometimes this online test has a, a time limit uh, so that you may not have time to Google it. Right? <laughs> so I've set for some of those tests as well. So it's good for you to also be prepared that everything is going to be done online, right? Now, when you are 
just like me speaking to you right now, you will also see my video. Uh, this is where your first impression still count, right? Uh, this is where you will have to check on, you know, your uh, non-verbal communication example, your facial expression, your smile, continue to smile to the camera because that's where the audience are, are looking. I know this is not normal because normally when we meet uh, people face to face, we tend to smile more. But when we meet with a, a, a laptop, we don't usually do that. So it's also important to know how your posture is, you know, how, so sit, uh, uh, in a very comfortable position, right? not too comfortable in a couch or, or, or lying down, right? So sit upright. And lastly, it's also check for your wardrobe, meaning check for your attire, right? So this is, is very important because that is where they evaluate yourself. Um, other things that you should also prepare is also uh, to check for other disturbances. Uh, so today, because uh, I have to do this webinar and I have two kids with me and we are all stuck in the house. I have to put my two kids up in a room to go and play with their console first for the next one hour and then I can do this webinar. So I have to also minimize distraction. I have to prepare uh, uh, first so that they, they, they won't disturb this webinar, right? Now, the last thing here is also to assess your work from home preparedness. Why am I sharing that? It's because one of the new normals is also going to be working from home a lot more. Uh, mainly because today um, we've seen that for two months, uh, some organizations can operate without employees going back to their work. And even for our, our team, uh, customer service teams, uh, we have people operate, all of them are operating from home using the desktop and laptops, right? So it's important to have a device ready. Um, be prepared that some organizations or companies will require you to install uh, softwares onto the device. Uh, some of those are VPNs and stuff like that, uh, uh, antiviruses. And lastly, you will need a strong internet connection. I think this is key today with the new generation internet connection is vital. Without it, I think we will go uh, bonkers so, so I staying at home without internet, I don't know what I will be doing. So strong internet cable uh, connection is important because we are going, uh, the new normal is we're going to do more online communication. We're going to do more video conferences. So that is key, right? Yeah, I don't mean go wild and get a one gigabit line, just uh, a steady line would be very important, right? Cool. Um, in, so we have a few more minutes. Uh, maybe we can just take in a few more questions. Kelvin? Yeah, sure. We have uh, some good questions here. Um, so one from uh, Chin Yi Hin. Um, as fresh graduate at, during post-pandemic uh, situation, well, they're not only competing with other graduates, but also those who lost their jobs recently. So right. are they supposed to reduce their desired salary amount due to less experience? Are they required to reduce their salary due to less experience? Yeah. Um, okay. <clears throat> now, that, that, that is two, two prongs to this question. One is talking about experience care. Candidate. So you can see over here, yes, some of the experienced candidates uh, do lo lose their jobs. And that's where you're competing with some of these uh, people in, ter in terms of uh, fighting for, for the same job with them. But they wouldn't be going down to entry level or fresh graduate level. Uh, they will still be going towards perhaps the executive, senior executive manager level. So that is within those range as well, right? Um, now the second part is also talking about the salary, right? Um, salary still remains one of the hottest topic in many, uh, in many sessions that I conduct. Um, so, what I can suggest over here is salary still may still uh, be the same. Uh, do check uh, Job Street Salary Guide. Uh, there is a version online that you can go online to uh, and check out 
uh, the salary guide for if central, northern, and even the southern areas because it varies accordingly. It also varies between different specialization and industries as well. Now, um, in terms of salary, it wouldn't run uh, very far, right? Because uh, we Malaysian have a uh, Malaysian government impose a minimum wage, right? But um, I'm ask, I'm also not asking you to go and put a very high salary because then the, the hires will straight away di discard you out because they don't have that budget right but they do need workers to, to work right so example uh, uh, they would uh, some of the coffee shop the famous uh, chain coffee shop they will stay, they may need baristas right but uh, they would need baristas who can also pack the drinks so that the riders can go out. They will need more people to pack food and stuff. So multitasking becomes one of the key uh, components right now. Are you willing to multitask? Are you willing to do online marketing and something else? Right? So it, it really varies, right? Over here. Cool. Uh, the next question. So another one is, uh, what sort of project management skills are in demand in construction industry? Wow, that is very niche. Uh, perhaps I have to study uh, a little more in detail on the construction line uh, to see what project management is, is there. Then I can answer you. Um, and also find out which company. I think it's a good, uh, good way if you can use the job suite if you go online, uh, go to jobfree.com.my, then you can just type in construction or even project management and go into the, the, the project management site. And then you can see, is there anyone hiring? Then you roughly know from there as well. Uh, yeah, I have not done that analysis in that detail yet. So um, Lee here is asking, what are the main points that we need to look out for when choosing a job for fresh graduate? Is it salary, value, or opportunity? Um, <clears throat> as a fresh graduate, um, I would advise you that, you know, uh, don't wait for the dream job to, to, to land on your lap. Uh, I would say that, you know, picking up experience is far more important. Uh, and that's where any job right now within your what you studied is, is, is good enough and learn that experience first. Uh, and if you can, stay with that company long enough so that you learn. One of the reasons uh, for hires to look at resumes, uh, when they read the resumes, they don't want job hoppers. They don't want to see, oh, you've been working for this company for, for six months and then you move on to another company for six months. I'm talking for permanent roles. Uh, for internship, three months or six months is actually quite normal, right? But we do want to see longer uh, periods working in an organization. And that's where we see, oh, you are, you are committed. The reason being is because truly, in an, when you start working in an organization, the first six months is actually a honeymoon period where you where you start to learn the organization culture, the processes, you start to put your, your knowledge into practice to become, you know, to, to produce work. But you have not ex uh, be an expert in it yet. So before that, uh, you will need to spend more time. Yeah. Probably more than a year. Uh, one and a half years to two years in an organization is good enough. Then if you want to move on, it's okay. Cool. Hang on, let me just filter some of the questions. We got quite a few. Um, so we have one from Vanessa uh, regarding the hiring situation in the big fours. Are they still, are they freezing their hiring process or are mm. they still continuing to hire? Okay, uh, it really depends. Uh, Vanessa, for big fours, you're talking about the auditing companies, right? Yeah. Um, it really depends on the job roles and specialized job roles uh, because certain roles, uh, they, they are still looking for talents. Uh, certain uh, middle management roles, they perhaps are, are not hiring at, at the moment, right? But 
when they said they're not, hire, not hiring at the moment, and this is across the entire industry, um, today, we, uh, they would need to bounce back because they would need to, 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 to recover also. And we see that uh, gearing up in the second half of 2020. And because of that, they would also need talents to come in to help them, right? Uh, and we see that in any crisis, there's always opportunities. So some of them are laying low right now and trying to survive. Most are doing that, but there are certain key roles that they are changing as well, right? So with that, then you can see that they are gonna, they're going to hire in the second half. So be ready during that time. That means when they are hiring, don't start updating your resume then. Start updating your resume now, you know what I mean? So because they may be searching for your resume today, but they will call you in a month or two months or so, right? So that's very important. So the, um, the next question, uh, I think it's also very relevant to um, quite a lot of people in general. Um, so it's regarding when, when the hirers are asking them about your weakness, um, what should they answer? Should, we, should they be honest with it um, or, 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 you know, or, or not? Uh, okay, yeah. For example, my weakness is I tend yep. to do the job alone when my partner did not put the same effort. <laughs> okay. Um, now, I want to say that use this opportunity to turn it into a strength, right? Uh, use your weakness a question into a strength. And this is where you can also share, hey, uh, one of my weaknesses is actually coming to uh, the interview or even the Zoom meeting uh, early uh, because I, oh, I like to be prepared. Uh, and this is the weakness is because, you know, uh, I'm overly prepared most of the time and, you know, I tend to wait uh, for 15 minutes even before the Zoom starts, right? Or this interview starts. This, this webinar starts, right? So that can be a weakness. Or use this question, it's actually kind of a trick question that higher interviewers ask. Another question is, you know, what is your weakness? It can be like, hi, uh, I am also uh, too helpful. I, I help my, I can't, I can't bear to see my colleagues, uh, you know, suffer alone. And therefore I always extend a helping hand to my colleagues so that we, we as a team grows together. Right. But in fact, it's just uh, actually very true t in today's world. Uh, people in teams tend to go further. But if you work alone, you may be fast, but people who work in team will go further. Right? So I, uh, during this MCO period, I do encourage you if you have opportunities to be with your meet with your friends in Zoom or in not out, not out uh, physically, that's very important because we can share ideas and talk to one another, support one another, right? Because we've been stuck uh, alone most of our, our time in the house, right? Yeah. Cool. I can see the Q&A section here climbing up. Maybe, uh, Kelvin, you want to pick up those popular questions? Before yeah, I, I'll, I'll just pick one here. Um, it's regarding the Job Street portal. So they're saying that um, how do they stand out or how to ensure your profile really stand out compared to other candidates? What are the common mistakes done by fresh graduates? This was asked oh. by Saifu Redza. Okay, now one of the most common uh, mistakes is you have an empty profile uh, in Job Street. That means you just key in your name and that's, and that's it. And after that, you attach your Word or PDF resume online and, and you leave it as it is. Now, because I wish I can go online and I can actually share with you how Hira see it. Hira will see a blank resume and you see your name, right? So they will discard that. So fill in the job fit profile as complete as possible. Do not, uh, do not just attach your, your, your resume on, uh, online there, but also fill it in the profile. The, the profile is where today HR uh, sees this and Job Street standardized this across the 90,000 of our clients. Uh, 90,000 of our clients, each, each client has maybe five HR, so 90,000 times five HR personnel, 90,000 times five, yeah. 
Uh, so you have a lot of HR professionals looking at that. And, and job streets profile is standard, meaning to say we know the top part is your address, your, 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 your contact details. The bottom part is your language proficiency. In the middle is your experience level, right? The second thing that we see is a challenge is also um, you apply for a job and you didn't update your contact details, which is your, either your email or your phone number. You may change your phone number. Maybe in college, you use a, a different phone number. After graduating, you change a new phone number. Then can, uh, hires cannot contact you. Then it's also another problem, right? Do not expect uh, hires to, 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 to try multiple ways. You know, if they call once, twice, cannot, or maybe they emailed you once, Cannot, they moved on already, right? So keep your contact details uh, updated as well. Yeah. Cool. Is there any last question? Um, so, so there's one here that asks, um, how long does a company take to access candidates before they accept them? Okay, now, uh, that's a very good question. Uh, it really depends on the urgency of hire for each company, uh, some of them who are front, front lines, that, that means they are customer facing also, uh, they require it immediately because th that's where operations wise, they can actually uh, stabilize their entire business operations, right? Uh, if not, then their current employees are uh, covering this vacant position to do their work. That would mean in more OT and more time. That would also mean in more employees being stressed out. So it really depends uh, on each company uh, individually, um, but more senior roles, uh, they do spend more time to evaluate the candidates. Uh, for, for senior positions, they will also have multiple more interviews. So for example, um, <clears throat> when I first get my, uh, my, my first fresh graduate job, my God, that's 20 years ago, then you will see that uh, it's just a one-time interview by the hiring manager and it's done. The next two days, I get a, the job offer, right? Um, whereas in Job Street, I have to go for three different interviews, right? So it, it takes more time to, to get in. So even the interview process will take uh, one and a half months when I join, right? So so that's that's how complicated it can be. So it, it it already differs because um, today hires are looking at many different aspects apart from your academic uh, qualifications. They're also uh, looking into your, uh, how you think, how you perform, how your analytical skills are, what you, are, you can um, think on the feet. So there's a lot of um, questions surrounding situational, uh, sit situational, uh, uh, Q and A's where you talk about you know hey if I have a shop this and this so they want to analyze your critical thinking, right? Uh, so it it really depends on that. Cool. We do we have time for one more last question? Yeah, we can. Um, so, you know, during this um situation, this crisis as well. So, is it fair for a candidate to actually ask the hirer? Uh, what are the steps or measurements that you have taken for your employees during MCO? Oh yes, I, I think it's fair from both um, both employees and staff. And I'm also speaking for the, the current employees here today that you know they would also want to know what are steps taken by the management and team. Um, but more importantly, also while we are talking about job securities, we also want to help the company to sustain right they are businesses so it's it's fair and most to, to enhance that question you can also uh, follow through by asking another question by saying if i am hired how can i help uh, the company to uh, sustain in this current situation as well what can i do right yeah so that's that's a very good question and that's how you can bounce back right right 
uh, with that, I just want to show you another side before I end my session today. Um, we are slightly going overboard of time already over here. So I just want to show you the next slide, which talks about our resource hub. This is the COVID-19 uh, resource hub that Job Street has. And what some of what I've shared is already uh, online uh, in this platform over here. So what you can do is um, you can go into this platform, uh, it's a web link, and you can go and scroll down uh, and, and check out and see what are other jobs available, right? So this is where you can, you can continue to find what are some of the critical roles and also uh, those industries that are still hiring jobs for supplementary income, right? Uh, so you can go online onto there, yeah? Okay, cool. Uh, that's it from me. Uh, we will be having another uh, webinar uh, and Kelvin will be arranging another session and we'll talk on another interesting topic, talking about final resumes and interviews. So we'll leave it to Kelvin to handle that, right? Yep. Thank you, everyone. Um, and thank you also for, the, uh, for all your questions. Unfortunately, we are not able to answer um, all of it. Um, but of course, if you do still have uh, some of the questions that you want answered, uh, feel free to stop by on our social media platforms. Uh, we have Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, um, and just drop your questions there. We'll answer you um, as, as best as we can. Um, I would like to also take this opportunity to thank Chua for his time to present um, the topic for today. And also uh, Riyadh, who is still with us here uh, from InvestKL, um, to, to spend time with us here today. So um, I guess that brings us to the end of the webinar for today. As Chua mentioned, we have other webinar series coming up um, in the following weeks. So stay tuned. Um, I will be sending out the invite to, to all of you again um, uh, really soon. So thank you again. Um, so do remember, if you have any questions, you can still drop us um, a note on social media um, and we'll respond to you. All right. thank you and stay safe, everyone. Bye-bye.